What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Today's episode we're going over the polishing steps on this Toyota 4Runner using our Torque R rotary polisher because one, one of our good friends of the Detail Garage has been asking in the comments how to use a rotary and also some rotary videos so this is one way to answer it and also this car sits outside a lot and it's subjected to all kinds of elements but mainly it's got a lot of critters and cats and things like that crawling all over the hood. You can see on the glass we've got little footprints and the cat has been scratching the hood so I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways to polish it using a rotary polisher. To begin any polishing job, you want to clean the vehicle, which we've already done by washing it, and then we clayed it using a medium clay bar, which has now collected a lot of grime and contamination, but that's the only way to prep your vehicle for machine polishing, because if you don't, it can pick it all up in your pad, creating a micro swirl, or it'll clot the pores and you'll get kind of an uneven effect. But to make sure you get the best job, you want to clay it first, and then you can use a product like Wipeout or something like that to prep the surface by removing any kind of remaining oils or anything that can be on the surface before you start polishing. And over here we have our Torque R rotary polisher. And if you're unfamiliar with the term rotary, essentially what this is doing is it basically spins or oscillates in one certain particular area, as opposed to a dual action or random orbital where it will disperse or it'll make its own kind of pattern. This basically is essentially a drill or a motor like that where it's gonna be mostly in one area. And this takes a lot of practice to get the proper you know, effect. But also if you're not careful, you can actually damage the paint very quickly because it creates a lot of heat. So if you're unfamiliar with this tool, this is a great time to start learning it. Or maybe if you're trying to up your detailing game and you want to polish a little bit faster, this is the way to do it because I've said it before, this machine is like a scalpel, whereas your dual action or random orbital is more like a butter knife where it's going to cut, but it's not going to cut as aggressively or as fast as a rotary will. But on top we have our orange hex logic pad, which I go to with most polishing jobs because it's a medium heavy cut. So it's going to be a good baseline with whatever polishing job you're trying to accomplish. And I'm going to pair it with B36 cutting polish. Just shake it up to mix it all together. And we're going to apply five dime sized dots to the pad or about the size of one hex. And what this has is a micro abrasive that's going to diminish as we polish. We want to make sure that it goes completely clear before we finish. That's a problem that a lot of people have is that they'll pull off before it's done. And then they think that the polish hasn't done a correct job, but you actually need to wait till it breaks down completely. That way it does its job thoroughly. We're also using a little bit of pad conditioner to help moisten the pad, which reduces a lot of the dusting. It also helps the longevity of your pad. Some people use water, which is fine, but it's not going to give the same kind of nutrients that your pad needs to last as long as possible. So now we're gonna go over to the vehicle and just like when we're doing any kind of polishing job, we're gonna blotch it out. Essentially you can start wherever you want. A lot of people start in the middle and work their way out, but I'm gonna start here on the edge just to give you guys a little demonstration. And the only difference that you have when working with a rotary, as I mentioned, it's gonna cut a lot faster, but also before you turn it on, a lot of people who are used to dual actions or random orbitals will put it on the paint and then turn it on. That's the proper way to ensure that you don't damage the bearings, but when you're using a rotary, you wanna turn it on before you go to the vehicle, this way you're not creating a swirl or some kind of incorrect polish you know, mark. And also, you wanna make sure that the machine is completely flat at all times, because with a rotary, if it is angled one way or too much to the other way, it's gonna create a hot spot or it'll start marring the paint. So you wanna keep it nice and flat. So an old trick that I use is I put my thumb right here just above the analog screen, and this kinda of helps it from tipping one way or the other, it just keeps it nice and centered. And also on top, you don't need to apply a lot of pressure, basically just the weight of your hand because this machine, it's gonna do all the work for you. It's essentially very effortless, but it takes a long time and a lot of practice to get it right. So what you need to do is just take your time with it, practice with it, but you wanna make sure that you're constantly moving this way you're not creating a hot spot or potentially burning the paint. So now we're gonna turn it on the lowest speed setting and I'm gonna spread this out. And then on about speed setting three, which is about 1500 RPM, then we're actually gonna do our polishing, working it until it goes completely clear. And then we're gonna take it off, buff it off, and check our work.
now essentially the polish has gone clear. We'll just take a clean microfiber towel and buff off the excess polish so we can check our work. But as you see here, I was using a cross hatching pattern, which I use a lot because this ensures that we're not leaving any kind of tiger striping or we're not missing any spots. This way you get an even key and an even shine over the entire vehicle. But now the paint feels very smooth and it's got a lot of shine compared to this. Even over here you have this oxidation, water spots, and those fine scratches, but over here, not exactly a mirror effect because the charcoal gray on this Toyota kind of hides a lot of the imperfections and it also doesn't shine very bright, but you can see a huge difference from here to here. And now we can refine it further using a white pad and V38, which is really gonna jewel the paint. But here's a question that we get commonly asked is, what do you do around body lines or intricate areas such as this? The forced rotation of the machine is going to work clockwise whether you're looking at it from the top view. So what you wanna do is use that to your advantage and essentially, if the machine is going to be rotating this way, you want to make sure that your pad is contacting here first because this is where your cutting is going to be out on this side. This creates all the heat if you're going to be working in a small area. So what that would look like is something similar to this, where you're polishing this way, going with the flow of the body and also with the rotation of the machine. This way you're not burning or digging in on the grooves here, but you're also going to give it the same shine over the entire vehicle. You can use the same process on the side of the vehicle, on the flares, or any kind of contour or intricate areas on the vehicle. So now we're gonna move on to the second step of our polishing where we're going to use a white pad V38 to finish it off and then bring out the shine of the vehicle. And with any polishing job, you wanna make sure you're putting something on top of it to protect it. Whether it's a ceramic coating, it could be a collection of glaze, sealant, and wax, or basically anything you wanna to do to protect the surface because now that you've polished it, you've opened up all the pores of the paint, which now leaves it you know, kind of exposed to the elements. Uh, anything can basically clot the surface and it will oxidize very quickly. Or, you know, again, if you're going to protect it for the long run, something like a ceramic coat is going to protect it against UV rays or scratches and swirls. So to finish it off, you can put on basically anything. I think for this vehicle, since the owner likes to take this thing outdoors a lot, maybe we'll put on something like HydroCharge, or maybe we'll do something basic like Jet Seal. But in the meantime, you guys can check out these products on our website, chemicalguys.com, or at your local detail garage to get some product advice. Come say what's up to us at Detail Garage Los Angeles to come see all these great things. Come meet myself or all the guys behind the camera. And as always, we'll see you guys next time right here in the Detail Garage.